Today, we're going to be connecting this example SharePoint site to this Microsoft Fabric data lake house. And no, we're not going to be doing it by copying a ton of data from SharePoint into the lake house using something like a data flow. Instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a shortcut that will allow Microsoft Fabric to read the data where it exists on the SharePoint site. Now, this is a new preview feature for Microsoft Fabric, and it's one that I'm excited to explore. My name's Ned. This little guy is my Husky Chai, who some of you saw on my earlier videos and haven't seen for a little bit. And today we're talking Microsoft SharePoint shortcuts in Fabric. So what is a shortcut in Microsoft Fabric? Well, they work for lake houses and KQL databases. What I'm in right now is a lake house and it's a lake house named test. In a lake house, you can create both table shortcuts and file shortcuts. Uh, a lake house will automatically recognize any data that's stored as a delta or a parquet uh, file format as a table shortcut. Everything else should be a file shortcut. And you can create them by clicking the little three dots right here by tables and then clicking new shortcut or by going up to the tables section and then clicking these three dots and then clicking new schema shortcut or by going to the DBO schema or pre-existing schema, clicking the three dots and then clicking new table shortcut. Now, when you click either of these buttons, you'll get a pop-up window like what we just saw. So I'm gonna click this new shortcut on the file section, and then we can see all of the various options that we can create a shortcut to. We can create an internal shortcut to other Microsoft One Lake items, or we can create external shortcuts to uh, files in Amazon or in Azure or in the Dataverse or in GCP. But the two new ones are you can create a shortcut to both OneDrive or a SharePoint folder. Now the SharePoint one in particular really excites me because a lot of business teams store files on SharePoint. So if I can automatically read those files and any changes they might have made, directly into my Microsoft Fabric items, that's just one less step I need to take as a business intelligence or data engineer or analytics, analytics engineer or whatever fancy title I decide to call myself on that day. So let's take a look at how to build one of these or shortcut things. But first, if you wouldn't mind, and if you've made it to this point in the video, hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It really means a lot and it really helps the channel grow. Okay, let's jump in and let's create the shortcut. So I still have that window open that I had earlier, but if you don't also have it open, you can just simply <laughs> click the three dots right here and then click new shortcut. In order to create a SharePoint shortcut, we're gonna click this SharePoint folder preview. And just an emphasis and a quick warning for those of you who are watching this video, at this point in time, this is a preview feature, which means it can be a little buggy, but we're gonna work around that. So I'm gonna select preview right here. I'm gonna click new connection. And then I'm going to go find my SharePoint site URL, which in this case is enterprise data strategies at sharepoints.com. And then we want to include the actual site name, which is example site. And then I already actually have a connection configured, but I can give this connection a name of Ned's SharePoint. And then I've authenticated in with an organizational account and I can go ahead and just hit next. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to create a connection directly to that SharePoint site and it's going to load up the site directory. I don't really have anything on this site or any like subfolders or folders other than documents, which is why the only option that's pop popping up for me is the documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click that little check box and then click next. Now this is going to bring me to a really exciting screen and that is transform to Delta. Now 
This is a feature that I'm still playing with myself, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to use Microsoft's AI services to automatically read text, or in this case, CSV files directly into a Delta Parquet format. And the AI engine is going to check those files for new updates every two minutes, which is really, really, really cool. So jumping back into the computer then, for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip this. And we won't skip it uh, in a section a little later on in the video. But first, I just want to show you how the actual shortcut functionality works. So let's hit skip and then let's hit create. When this first creates the shortcut, it could take a little while to load. And you'll know it's loading because you'll see a little progress bar here under the notifications bell. But this one loaded pretty quickly. So let's click the little drop down right here. And boom, there are all of the files on our SharePoint site available for us in our lake house. And we could query this with a Microsoft Fabric notebook. Uh, you know, we could reload this into SQL tables, you know, you can do a lot once it's in our, in your lake house. So let's click one of these files. So let's, for example, click this new query XLSX file. What you'll see is that it'll take a little while to load, but once it's loaded, it will actually just pop open the file in tabular format. And just like that, it loaded. First things first, you might notice is that there's no real column headers. So let's click this view settings button and then click first row as header. Now, once again, this will take a little bit of time to load and process because this is a relatively big file I have on my SharePoint site. But let's go back over here and then let's go and navigate to this Excel file. So here we are opening it up. And let's go ahead and let's make a change. So as you can see, the first row currently has a column name called order ID. So let's go ahead and change this to video underscore demo. And let's hit OK. And let's save that onto our SharePoint site. So here it is. Let's go ahead and let's refresh this. And let's just see modified a few seconds ago. And let's see if our well, if our shortcut picks up on that. So let's hit refresh. Let's let it refresh. And then let's let it reload its preview and let's see if it finds the new column name. And I would be willing to bet that it does. Keep in mind, all of this data is not actually being copied into Microsoft Fabric. Rather, Microsoft Fabric is actually reading it directly out of the uh, file folder as is. And as you can see right here, look, it picked up on video demo. It didn't pick up on the first row as header, but I think that might just be because I actually changed one of the header names. All right, let's now go and let's try that automatic AI uh, CSV transformation, which is the piece of this that I am really excited about. And the reason for that is because if you have a CSV file that's automatically getting loaded into a Microsoft Fabric table, and then that table is automatically available in a direct lake semantic model, that means that in theory, you could have a business user edit a CSV file and then have that data reflected in Power BI within two minutes, especially if the AI engine is actually running every single two minutes. Isn't that exciting? So let's go ahead and let's try to set that one up. Now, keep in mind, this will only work for CSVs. So I do have this example CSV.CSV, which should work and should be recognized by the AI engine. Because this is going to be a table, let's go over here to the three dots next to DBO and then let's click new table shortcut. Then let's go ahead and let's select the SharePoint folder. We've already created an existing connection, which is Ned's SharePoint, because I had a typo uh, connection. <laughs> and let's click next. And then once this loads, let's once again select the shared documents. And then when this hits next one more time, we're going to use the automatic transformation. And as you can see, auto transform applied, transform from CSV to Delta, deliminator, comma. Now, just a note on this. When you are using this AI tool, 
I have run into problems if you have things like spaces in the first uh, row here and you're indicating, hey, use this column name as header. I would imagine that this would also be true if you had any kind of special characters. So just a little warning on that. Be careful. So jumping back in, let's set it as comma, use first rows headers on, and let's go ahead and let's kick next, and then let's hit create. Now, because this is an AI engine, I have a feeling this is going to take quite a bit more time than when we are just simply uh, having that table exist. So as you can see right here, we have this unidentified. And then within here, we have our shared documents. So let's go ahead and let's refresh this. And nothing has really changed. As you can see up here, though, we do still have this little progress bar that's going. And we have a lot of a spinny thing right here next to shared documents. So let's give this some time. And one of the things that we can do while this is going, right, is we can click refresh one more time and boom, there it is. It, it just recognized it as a table. So let's go over and let's click that and let's see, did it load all of the data from my CSV right here into a table? And it's waiting, waiting, waiting. As you can see, it's it started its, I think it's Spark Engine. And just like that, there is all of our data from the CSV file in a table. But remember, this is supposed to be smart. So what happens if we add another CSV file into our SharePoint site? So I do on my computer right here have one more example csv.csv which was trying to load off screen so let's go ahead and let's edit this by going um we'll hit the delete key right here and we'll call this video demo and we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of these right here and then we'll save this as example csv2 right here and we'll hit save and then let's go ahead and load this up onto our SharePoint site so let's go back over here and then we will copy example SharePoint or example CSV2 into documents and there it is so let's now see if our shared documents will pick up on our new CSV. And I'm going to prompt it to look by just going ahead and clicking this little refresh button, just so see if we can kind of get the juices going. And it looks like it identified our new row. Here it is, row six, uh, has a user ID of one and a first name of video demo and a file path of CSV two. But what happens if we modify a file? Well, let's go ahead and let's try. So here is that CSV is two and let's change user ID one from video to videos. And then let's add a second row of user ID two and let's go Ned demo. And let's go ahead and hit save to do, do, do. And then let's go back over here to our SharePoint site and let's copy this CSV back over here and SharePoint is not going to like it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the replace button. And just like that, CSV2.CSV has been uploaded to our documents. Let's hop back over to our shortcut and let's go ahead and let's give it another refresh. And after a few minutes, it looks like it did pick up our on our changes. As you can see, row one from CSV2 now has videos and we now have a user ID of two of Ned Demo coming in. Unfortunately, I must have uh, had a bunch of blank spaces or created a bunch of extra rows in my CSV because it found and loaded all of those. And we can very quickly confirm that by just going ahead and opening that CSV 
in Notepad++. And look, we did unfortunately have a bunch of blank rows. So that wasn't Microsoft's Fabric's fault. So are we excited about this feature? Let me know down in the video comments. And if you want to see me build an end-to-end -end Power BI dashboard on top of an automatically loaded CSV, give this video a like and also let me know down in the comments. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. Uh, that said, I appreciate you spending this time with me and I hope you're as excited about this feature as I am after watching this video.